Hi, I'm Rebecca. I work here at The Bee, and today's topic is going to be about batting. Um, I know my eyes glaze over whenever this comes up because there are so many different kinds and so many different terms associated with it. Um, and I'm sure yours do too. So um, we're just going to talk about some terms, talk about some different fibers, and what are the pros and cons of each one, and maybe some of the usages um, that um, certain batics are best for. Um, first of all, um, there's loft. Your loft is how thick the batting is, um, and you can kind of see over here that for example, this is a wool and it is has more loft, is kind of thicker than this, which is a cotton. Your loft will help you decide, like if you want to make a comforter type thing or you want to tie a quilt, then you want a, lot, a batting with a lot of loft. Um, if you want something that is going to hang on the wall, then maybe you want a little bit less loft um, and because um, you, you know, you don't want it all squishy. Um, Got to put glasses on because I can't see without them. Um, the other thing that will that uh, will determine what batting you choose is drape. Um, the drape is how it hangs. So, uh, to use the past example, if you are making like a comforter, you and it's all big, old, squishy, and full. Um, that's going to drape a lot differently than something that you're hanging on your wall that you want to lay flat or hang nicely. Bearding is what happens when the fibers poke up through the fabric. Um, and scrim is a, um, it's kind of like a webbing or a net that's very fine made of polyester that is um, either in the center or on the outside of a batting um, and then the batting fibers are needle punched. Well, that's when, you know, a whole bunch of needles like this through the scrim, and that provides a um, sort of a stabilization net, if you will, um, that keeps the batting from shifting, the fibers from shifting around so you don't get lumps and keeps um, the batting um, stable, keeps it from stretching too much in any given way. Okay, fibers. The first is polyester. Um, it does tend to have the higher loft, and if you're tying your quilt or if you're making like a comforter type thing, um, that is probably the batting that you're gonna wanna use because it's poofier. Um, it does require less quilting, which is why you can tie with it. Um, it is less expensive than other fibers, durable, and it doesn't shrink, um, but on the con side, it does tend to beard, would you know, poke up through the fi the fabric. It can shift and separate into those lumps. It's not breathable because it's not a man-made fiber, or it is a man-made fiber. And at high temperatures, um, it melts. Um, so yeah, that's not a good thing if you you know don't want to get me plastic melted on you in the case of a fire. Um, fusible battings tend to be a, um, a mixture of cotton and poly, um, which is our next fiber, main fiber category, pot, cotton poly blends. Um, fusibles have like a, a meltable glue layer on um, one or both sides of the batting, and that allows it to fuse when you iron it onto fabric. Um, cotton poly blends for general batting purposes are usually like an 80% cotton, 20% polyester uh, fiber content, and a good example of that would be Hobbs heirloom batting. Um, it is less expensive than 100% cotton, it shrinks less than 100% cotton, and a whole lot of machine quilters use this. Uh, if you don't provide the batting, this is what the kind of thing that they'll use. It's a perfectly good batting and, um, you know, durable, it's great. It's slightly less breathable than 100% cotton. And it, as over time, as you use it and wash it and things like that, it can beard some more than cotton tends to do. Um, 
100% cotton is actually not 100% cotton. Um, that's because the fibers are 100% cotton, but it contains a scrim, um, which is that sort of polyester net that it's needle punched into um, to give it stability. So it's really the 100% cotton batting is actually really more like 90% cotton and 10% polyester. Um, if and, and all 100% cotton battings have scrim unless it specifically says there's no scrim. And the only reason you would need a no scrim batting is if it's you're gonna use it for something like that you want a microwave because the polyester will melt in the microwave. Um, and if um, you use a no scrim cotton batting, you won't have that problem. Um, I have some samples here of um, warm and natural, which is the cotton batting that we use the most often. The natural is not bleached and the white is bleached. Um, and they're basically the same thing, except that um, the natural still has um, some of the cotton detritus, let's say, like a seed or you know something like that in it, um, which the warm and white does not um, because it's processed more um, to make it whiter and, and therefore it's really good for using behind white or light colored fabrics that you don't want anything to show through. Cotton batting is um, Need, it needs to be quilted fairly closely, like every four inches, which is a little bit more than a cotton poly blend. It shrinks as pretty much all um, natural fibers do, about three to five percent. Um, so there's a debate over washing versus not washing, pre-washing versus not washing. Um, I'm lazy, so I fall into the no pre-washing category. Um, also, I, I really like after the quilt is completed and gets washed, because I have cats and so everything gets washed in my house. Um, I like the sort of scrunchy look that it gets after there's a little bit of shrinkage and I also don't pre-wash my fabrics for the same reason. Um, cotton is very breathable. It's kind of a moderately priced batting. It softens with age and use, so it gets just nice and squishy and lovely. Um, and I would say that that's the, the batting that we sell by far the most of. Next we have wool, which is, I love wool. Well, for those of you who are familiar with my work in the store, I work with wool a lot. Um, wool batting is um, a little loftier than cotton um, and it's um, super warm but it's very lightweight. It's lovely to work with if you want like a nice warm squishy uh, winter quilt. I make a lot of flannel quilts and use wool as the batting in those. Um, it requires quilting every five to eight inches, so a little bit less than cotton batting. It also shrinks three to five percent. Um, and one of the beautiful things about it is that it resists creasing. So I don't know if you, you know, depending on how you store your quilts, if you fold them in the same place a lot, you'll get creases in cotton batting because cotton fibers will bend and crease. Wool won't. So if you um, find that you're getting a crease, you can just steam it and it'll go away, um, which makes storing it like your quilt if you want it to be an heirloom, makes it just really nice. Um, super breathable it can it is a little pricier than um, co the cotton or polycotton um, and it can be allergenic because some people are allergic to the lanolin that is a natural um, byproduct of wool so that's something to be aware of um, our next fiber is bamboo. We don't currently have any bamboo, but we have some on order and it should be coming in soon and I'm super excited about it. Um, bamboo comes as either a blend, 50% cotton, 
uh, bamboo or 100% bamboo, which is what we're getting. Um, we're getting a six ounce, which will have um, almost as much loft as wool. It shrinks three to five percent and it's very eco-friendly. Um, bamboo doesn't require fertilizers or pesticides or anything to grow. Um, it grows like a weed. It has, it, it doesn't have any bleach or binders or glues to hold it to hold the fibers together. So it's um, super um, organic. And, and the stuff we're getting, which is from Windline Textiles, is certified organic, all the fibers. And um, it has an excellent drape. It also resists creasing like the wool, which is fabulous. It's breathable. And it's also kind of temperature compensating. It's cool in the summertime and warm in the wintertime. It's naturally antibacterial. And um, I've read that this quality lasts through more than 50 washings. So um, that's nice if you have somebody who has asthma or some kind of allergic thing going on. Um, it does cost a little bit more, but you know, I will tell you my philosophy on things quilting. Um, you put a lot of work into these things, pretty much no matter what kind of quilting you do. And I guess I feel like that's my art. That's something that gives me a great deal of joy. So I, I use whatever I need to use. I use whatever I want. And I use the best quality um, what, what's the word I want? Ingredients <laughs> that I can. Um, and I'm going to give this bamboo a try and I'm hoping I love it as much as I think I'm going to. Um, finally, we have Quilter's Dream Orient Batting. We are in love with this stuff. It is a blend of silk, bamboo, cotton, and tencel, which is um, naturally occurring fibers from eucalyptus trees. Um, it's a proprietary blend. They won't even tell us how much, what percentage of what. It requires quilting every six to eight inches, so it's you know very versatile in terms of what how much you have to quilt it. Um, it has minimal shrinkage. It has a beautiful drape. It is soft and lovely, and and it it also temperature compensates, resists creases increasing, it's eco-friendly, and we just love it. And it's really moderately priced. I mean, I think it's a little bit more maybe than the Warm and Natural, but not a lot and totally worth using. And it just gives a nice, soft, light, drapey feel to your, to your quilts. Um, that's kind of all I have for today. And uh, I hope this is a little helpful for what you would like to use batting for. Thanks.